Hello YouTube, this is the Best Mac Tutorials, and welcome to Java. Uh, if you are a subscriber for a while, you may have um, noticed that I took off my old Java tutorials that I had uploaded. I decided to redo the series, because um, after taking a full year of Java, I think I can um, do those things a lot more justice with knowing what I do now. So, uh, first you'll notice I am on a PC. Uh, yes, I have moved over to uh, the PC because cheaper, faster, better for gaming, whatnot, and etc. Uh, like, for example, you can't get an iMac with even the latest generation of... or you can't get a Mac Pro with the latest generation of graphics cards. They're two series behind, and it's like a... Uh, not even the top-of-the-line GPU and stuff. So if you want a G... I mean, this thing has a better GPU than you could get in a $24,000 Mac Pro. They just don't offer better GPUs, and if you buy a better one, good luck finding Mac drivers for it. So, regardless of that, uh, I have moved over to the PC, and so I'm going to start doing Java tutorials now uh, on Windows and all kinds of other tutorials that I will do will be mostly on Windows now. So, I still have some Macs around here though for anything that needs to be done on a Mac, any kind of, you know, tutorial for how to use iMovie or whatever. But anyhow, here is Java. Um, what is Java? Java is a programming language that basically uh, runs in its own virtual machine on the computer. It creates a Java virtual machine or JVM, you'll see it referred to as. Uh, it is originally um, created by James Gosling and was developed by Sun Microsystems and lately or Oracle after Sun Microsystems was bought out, uh, or at least Java was bought out. Um, so what does this mean for developers? Well, really not much at all. The old uh, Sun Microsystems packages and whatnot are still there. Oracle just continues development. They add new things to it. Not a big thing to worry about, really. So what do you use to develop uh, in Java? Does Oracle give you something? Uh, do they give you a software kit? Not really. They give you a JDK Java development kit, which has a lot of the fundamental uh, things you need for developing in Java. It has the compiler and all that kind of stuff. However, uh, they don't give you anything like an IDE. Uh, they do give you Java docs for documentation, but they don't give you any kind of integrated develop in development environment or IDE like uh, Eclipse is. So we're just going to download Eclipse. There are other great IDEs, for example. Um, NetBeans is a great one. You can also, uh, BlueJ is pretty good for a simpler user, someone who doesn't want to do a lot, uh, or someone who wants to have really fast and easy jar exporting for executable jar files, you double click, they run. Uh, so we will be using BlueJ for that in the near future at some point, um, possibly. But the IDE is just a very simple, easy to use tool, it's easier to get started than going through the command line and compiling all your .class files yourself, or .java files to .class files and running those. It's a lot easier doing it in an IDE that does that for you. So, without further ado, download Eclipse IDE um, or for Java EE developers or Eclipse Classic 4.2. Uh, the Java EE developers uh, package has added uh, things for Java Enterprise Edition developers. Enterprise Edition has some extra packages and whatnot for things that are enterprise-ish. Um, <laughs> things like perhaps database accessing, um, <clears throat> things like that. And we're not going to be using those in these tutorials, at least not yet. Uh, if we ever do need to move over to Java EE, uh, I will make note of that. <clears throat> but for now, just download Eclipse Classic 4.2, click on whichever one, Windows 32 or 64, or if you have Mac or Linux, you can choose that from this drop-down menu here. I'm going to choose Windows, since I'm on that. Uh, download 32 or 64, whatever applies to your system. It'll take you to this page, just click on this download, and the download will start. I already have it downloaded to save you guys the time of waiting. You want to right click and click extract to or extract dot 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 if you don't have WinRAR installed. If it's just the default Windows on Archiver, right click extract dot 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 and it's pretty straightforward from there. I already have it extracted here. Inside of this uh, Eclipse folder here, you will see everything. That's the application, that's all the dependencies and everything else that it needs, configuration, uh, any plugins that you have for Eclipse in here. Uh, they also have a lot of plugins automatically, as you can see. Uh, they have some extra things that they give you here. Um, quite a few of them, actually. So, uh, what is this folder? This Eclipse folder basically has everything you need in it. It's a package deal. And generally, it's recommended to drag this to your computer and then to your C drive. However, I'm just going to drag it to my desktop. So, on my desktop here, Eclipse, and launch the Eclipse application. As you can see, I already have it pinned to this taskbar here. Now, uh, this is the latest version of Eclipse Juno. It ha does have a different uh, launch um, visual than does, say, something like uh, the older Eclipse, but I like it. It's nice. Uh, the interface itself is still pretty similar. 
Let's launch it here. And there it was just asking where I want to put uh, all the Eclipse files, and I just clicked OK. Uh, if you want to browse and put it somewhere else, that's great. If not, whatever. Close out this welcome screen, and let's go. This is our package explorer. What does our package explorer do? It's basically an area for us to keep all of our projects, our packages, uh, anything together in one area. So let's do file, new, Java project. And what do we want to call it? Tutorial 1. Alright, the execution environment, we want Java SE 1.6 more than likely. You can choose uh, 1.7 if you want to do development using 1.7 features, or you can choose an older one if you want backwards compatibility with those. If you compile something with 1.6, it's going to run in previous versions, unless it uses something that was new in, in one of these versions, or um, utilizes some kind of package that they didn't include until 1.6 or 1.5. So you, if you want to be sure, you can use an older one, uh, and then um, that'll keep you from using packages that aren't yet available in that version. So this is good for backwards compatibility. Not everyone has the latest Java. You know, when you see those Java updates and you're like, no, screw you. That's like the classic one that people don't update Java. So you may want to choose an older one, but I'm going to be working with 1.6. Let's just assume people have the latest um, or one of the latest. Uh, 1.7 is the very latest bleeding edge development. So here we go, 1.6, and man, I've been talking for six and a half minutes already. Let's finish this. All right, and now what do we have here? We have inside of this tutorial one folder, we have a folder called source. Those are where our source code files are going to go. And we have our Jerry system library. These are, um, you don't really have to worry about this now, but these are a lot of other things that are kind of included with our project. So uh, while we're clicked on source, or actually just clicked on the tutorial, the uh, main folder, the project folder, click on file, new class. Now, hold up, what is a class? A Java class is basically um, a file, a, basically a text file, essentially, that has a bunch of code inside of it. You can make objects of classes, you can do all kinds of cool things, but whatever is inside a class stays in that class um, as far as execution goes, whatever. That code does not change. Um, once you make a class and you compile it and run it, generally that code is not going to change. It's going to be compiled to bytecode and it's going to be run at runtime. That's it. Uh, it. By default the extension is .java. When it's compiled, uh, that's the source code file that you can just look up and see plain text of the code. Uh, a .class file is a compiled version. In order to extract Java code from that you need a Java compiler, some, a decompiler, something like a JD GUI. And we may be going into that at some point of, you know, wait, I made a program and then I deleted my Eclipse folder because I was reinstalling my operating system or whatever, and I don't have my project. Oh my god, what do I do? You open up a JD GUI session and you open up the package and you just extract all the information out of those .class files, you decompile them back to code. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Uh, but we'll get into that later. So, it's basically a um, file full of code. That's all classes. And we'll get more in depth with what you can do with them later on, how you can make objects of them and all that. So what are we going to call it? Let's call it uh, Hello World is too um, mainstream, too overused. Um, let's go with Tutorial 1. That's not overused at all. Um, check this box that says Public Static Void Main String Args. Um, this is basically your default um, method. We'll talk more about methods later. Don't worry if you don't know what they are yet. It's your default method where the program starts running assuming you're not doing an applet, and we're probably not going to do much with applets, so check that. Click Finish. Now, this text, while I can see it great on your screen, viewing in a, um, you know, youtube size 320p window, or even full screen, if you have slow internet and you have to load at 480p or whatever, this is pretty small for you. So, uh, let's just go Window Preferences, General, uh, let's see, General, um, appearance, colors and fonts, um, and going to here, and we're just going to edit these once it loads. And I'm going to make that font size just a little bit bigger here. So we're going to edit all of these. 14, 14, 14 across the board. That sounds good to me. Uh, edit 14. You're probably going to want to keep yours at the default. 
um, like this. However, if you go Window Preferences, you can adjust all of these things. So, uh, let's see here, Edit 14, and Java Editor here, Edit Default 14, um, Display Properties, can leave those how they are, Basic, Enter Font, Dialog Font, Header, Text Editor, Block Selection, Edit, for, whoop, Load 14, and change this to 14, oh, it's already at 14, and Apply, and there we go, we have uh, 14 point text. I prefer working in 10 to 12, uh, 11 is usually optimal, however for tutorial it's kind of hard to see this and I'm not going to do all the zooming in, zooming out and panning and all that. Um, I find that very annoying when I'm watching any kind of tutorial so I'm not going to put any of that in there. And uh, so here's our program, let's just delete all these unnecessary comments and let's talk about what those were for a second. What is a comment? When you are making a program and you want to basically say something um, about that code, but obviously if I just start writing in here, this code does this. Well, it's going to highlight this, it's going to say, hey, that's a Java keyword, what's this, and what's code, and what's it does? Are these objects, are these variables, you never declared them, what are they, what are you doing, what's, what are these ellipses, what are they doing here? So, uh, you can just type like that. However, when you type code, say system.out.println, and text, like that, it's going to say great because it sees it as a valid Java argument or statement. But when you just start typing that line of of code prints out text, it gets all confused. It has no idea semicolon. It has no idea what you're doing, what you're trying to achieve. The Java compiler is going to look at that, give you a compiler, not going to happen. However, if I put that before it, the compiler ignores it. This is human readable code that the compiler completely skips over. While it's going down some out to print line text, if there was a line after this right here, it would go right to that. It wouldn't care at all what is written here. However, what if you want multi-line? What if you want to say, you know, have a whole paragraph of text explaining what this awesome class does? Well, you can use this kind of notation, like this, and then as many lines down as you want, end it like that. One nice thing about IDEs is they do a couple of things automatically for you like whenever you press enter, putting them in those asterisks. These are completely optional. I can delete these, and the whole comment still works. I can, you know, do that, and blah, blah, blah. It's still all in a comment. It starts with this and ends with this. That's all the requirements of a multi-line comment there. It doesn't have to have those um, asterisks going down, but it helps with readability. So those are comments. What, what about this line? What did this do? Well, let's run it and see. Click this Run button. Click OK and it prints out in our terminal, our little terminal window here, text, our console. They call it a console. It prints out text. Now, um, that's very literal. What if we put something else? Bunnies. If we, print, if we press run and we click OK, it'll print out bunnies, which is also text. So, what is... This is a great place to start. This is generally the where you put hello world and you run it and you say, oh my god, I hello worlded. Alright, well, good. Let's move on. Let's explain what that means. Well, Hello World originally, a long time ago, was kind of the first exercise when programming. It was kind of the, make a program that, that prints out Hello World, and alright, now you've got, the base you've got the hang of the basic syntax of, you know, the semicolon at the end. For Java, for example. Other languages are, of course, different. Uh, for the semicolon at the end, for how the class has to be structured, for the syntax, everything. Uh, you, you've basically got the real primary first elements down. Now, what if you want to go, of course, further? You're not going to say, all right, I know Java now. I can go, I can move on. No, um, <laughs> I'm going to go learn .NET now. Uh, so you need to, and spacing doesn't really matter between these. I could have a million spaces or zero. Uh, for readability, sometimes you want more, sometimes you want less. If you have comments, whatever. So that's one of the nice things. Java is really adaptable with that. So what does this do? Well, these. this is one of the uh, limited amount of things that Java can do out of the box without importing something else. And the importing is real easy, and we'll get to that, but as far as we're concerned, system.out.println hello world, that's great. What does it do? Why is that so important? System is a package. What is a package? Well, I have a package coming today, for example, in the mail. 
It is a uh, Butterfly Labs Bitcoin single miner, uh, basically 0 0.8 giga hashes. So I consider that a package. What is in there? It's a Butterfly Labs single miner. What else is in there? Oh, uh, probably a um, driver CD, uh, unless you just download them from the internet. Uh, probably a USB cable. Uh, I think it needs to plug into the wall, so it'll have a power charger. It'll have bubble wrap. It'll have uh, or some kind of packaging, packaging peanuts. It'll have uh, some tape to keep it closed. Now, what does a Java package have? Well, it's actually, ironically, quite similar. It is a collection of a bunch of classes, things that you use. You use the USB cable, you use the driver um, CD, you use the actual unit, the Butterfly Lab single unit, you use the packaging to keep it safe. Uh, all of these things are in a Java package. It is basically, um, the system package has a useful class. We're in a class right now, and this is another class that we're calling. Uh, however, we never had to instantiate this object. Java magically has some objects that are already there for you. They're static. You don't um, initialize them. They're already there. They work out of the box. Done deal. Don't try to initialize the out object. At least not at this point. I have never once come across having to initialize an out object, an object of type out. However, I, I have made a lot of variables called out for like things like buffered readers, or, or sorry, buffered writers, or whatever which we will get to in time with networking, probably. System.out.println. So, it's saying, all right, I have this package system. I just got my package. It arrived. They rung the doorbell. I'm looking at the package. All right, now I'm looking for a specific thing. I'm not going to tear apart the package and then think, oh, what do I want? I'm going to think of, all right, what do I want to grab out? I want to grab out the box, the USB cable, the driver CD. I really don't care about the packaging peanuts. I really don't need to take those out. I'm just going to throw away the box. And that's what the garbage collector in Java would eventually do, is throw out packages uh, and whatnot that you are not using. Like, if you import a package you don't use, the garbage collector in Java, which manages memory for you, you don't have to mem manage memory in Java. However, this is a blessing and a curse. I will talk about that later. But um, it's going to say, all right, so I'm looking for out. I'm looking for my USB cable, or I'm looking for my out class. Finds it, pulls it out, and says, all right, this USB cable, or this unit has something in it called print line or print lin. What does this do? It prints and then it puts a new line character. The new line character is this, by the way, in case anyone was wondering. Uh, this slash, the one right under your backspace on a standard USA QWERTY keyboard. I don't know about its exact placement on Dvorak, but at any rate, slash and this is not this slash. This slash is the one under your question mark. This slash is the one under the backspace key above enter or return that's a new line character, it prints out a new line, it's like pressing enter. Uh, System.out.println prints this out, then puts a new line character, presses enter. It does not print this to a new line, it prints this and then a new line character. And um, this is not going to do very much as it is, but it, it's looking inside of out for a method called println, and it's passing it this information, this string. What is a string? Uh, for now, think of a string just like a bunch of letters uh, a bunch of characters all together in one, in a variable. <clears throat> a string is not a Java primitive, and we will also get into that later. A primitive is basically something right built into Java, something like an integer, or a double, which is another type of number, or a long, which is an another type of number, or a character, or a byte, or a boolean. Any of these, boolean is like true false. Uh, any of these things are primitives. However, a string, something enclosed in uh, quotation marks, it's called a string literal, it is actually an array, just, we haven't talked about arrays yet, just imagine just a long list of things, um, you know, like, I have an array of items, it's a list of all these items that are very similar, that are just listed out. Array is basically a list, that's all you need to know for now, we'll get into those probably in two tutorials from now. So, print lin, hello world, it's passing this string, which is a collection of characters, a list of characters, a group of characters in a specific order, to the println uh, method in the out class located in the system package. It's uh, a lot to chew off, but it's uh, later on as we get into ob more object-oriented programming, which Java is an object-oriented language, this will make a lot more sense. So it prints out hello world, uh, that's about it for this episode. Thank you for joining me, and uh, pretty soon I will put up another one about how to do um, user input and what uh, packages you can import that are useful, as well as looking into random number generation with Java. So join us next time. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you later.